KPOO San Francisco 89.5 FM. And you have just tuned in to the Fleetwood Report. I'd like to thank each and every one of you for tuning in as you ride through the city or as you sit in the comforts of your home. It's my pleasure to bring you soulful sounds and dialogue that will affect positive change in this community. So go on, kick back, relax, call somebody, anybody, everybody. Put it on your LinkedIn, your Instagram, your Facebook, and let them know the Fleetwood Report is on. Tubman began her life in the bonds of slavery, but lived her life helping others achieve their freedom. She really helped black people have a sense of um, self, a sense of freedom, and a sense that, you know, slavery was not right. Araminta Harriet Ross was born into slavery around 1820 in Dorchester County, Maryland. As a child, she was loaned out to different plantations. By the time she turned 12, she was working in the fields. When she was a young teen, she suffered a severe injury which would affect her for the rest of her life. A slave owner threw a metal weight at another slave and accidentally hit her in the head. For the rest of her life, she suffered epilepsy, terrible headaches, 
but she also had these strange visions, which she ascribed to God communicating to her. And she took these visions as a symbol of her mission, like Moses, to go and free her people. In 1844, she married John Tubman, who was a free black man, a fairly common occurrence in Maryland. Harriet was determined to escape her life of slavery, and in 1849, she finally did it. She risked her life by making her way from Maryland to Philadelphia. She followed the North Star and used the so-called Underground Railroad to make it to freedom. Lord, I'm a pilgrim. The Underground Railroad was an organized group of free blacks, whites, and Christian abolitionists who helped slaves escape to the North. Harriet had made it to the Promised Land. No one would have blamed her if she never returned to the South, but she desperately wanted to free her family. She made perilous trips back to free her two brothers, her sister, and her sister's two children. When she made a third trip to get her husband, she found he had taken another wife. Instead of returning with her husband, she saved more slaves. Not only did she escape slavery and achieve freedom for herself, but she went back down into the South to bring freedom to dozens of other slaves. Harriet was clever as she was brave, figuring out countless tricks to bring many slaves to freedom over the next several years. The fact that she developed these paths and trails that took people through the country and they traveled at night and they used quilts to, to have secret codes and, and know the paths and then to bring people north across the Mason-Dixon line into Ohio um, to find freedom. So she was a pioneer and I think a very, very strong woman. Her legendary status as an Underground Railroad conductor earned her the nickname Moses. Well, I think Harriet Tubman's uh, name Moses, you know, comes from Moses from the Bible, leading people to freedom. And it's a very, very proper name, I think, for her and, and one that she definitely lived up to. Champions and you MVP. 
Four degrees and a PhD. Still use your platinum card, you need four IDs. Then use it. If your skin is brown just like me, then you a got a promotion in a fat spray. You still a from the islands and your peoples was enslaved. You a no matter how much your get paid. You still a shot by the cops at a traffic stop. International, they into catching you with satellites from deep space. Now, who invented in the first place? They said America's the original birthplace. Who getting 10, 20 life on their first case? My n this game wasn't telling me. Oh, yeah. was telling me. So, yeah. No. No way. Not in America. Not America. Not America. Not in America. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Who ain't missed the beat? Do it for the deaf and the blind and those who don't even need. Do it for all the churn and the corn and the unborn. Do it for the speedy trials and all the lies and the war. How you go? Teach a man, old Mr. Cricket, the man with your whole congregation driving them. Brand new bins and bikes, brand new sins, loud on the million man. And all my brothers, sisters, them daddy, them doing time in the pen. America, told me, told me, told me, no. Not in America. Our country is a deep, and a liberty, but that'll never be. No, no way, not in America. Uh uh, not in this America. Not in America. No. This man wasn't told me. Told me. Told me. Told me. Told me. A lot of the racism in our community is based upon the house Negroes versus the field Negroes. And the house Negroes were the ones who Massa had sex with a slave and she'd have a baby. And because they were mixed black and white, they have the privilege of working in the house as servants, cooks, maids, etc. But if you were dark, you worked in the field from sun up to sun down. And that was the division. And the field Negroes were not fond of the house Negroes because they had privileges. And the house Negroes were not fond of the field Negroes because they were privileged. Uh, until this day, if you go online under hashtag team light skin, hashtag team dark skin, you'll see light-skinned black women and dark-skinned black women working over beauty issues. Uh, and each of them has over 300,000 members. The irony is I have, I have white female friends who go to tanning salons once or twice a week, become darker, crinkle up their hair, get Botox lips and butt lifts to look more ethnic. Yeah. Everybody wants to be black as a You are now listening to the Fleetwood Report on KPOO San Francisco 89.5 FM. Medgar Evers was born in Mississippi July 2nd, 1925. There were few opportunities afforded to him as a black man. When World War II broke out in Europe, Evers joined the army, fighting alongside white soldiers from around the world. It was in Europe as a young man that he came to realize how restrictive Jim Crow segregation was in the South and in his home state of Mississippi. Upon returning home from the war, Evers took advantage of the GI Bill to attend Alcorn College in Mississippi. While majoring in business administration, Evers took time out of his studies to woo fellow undergrad Merle Beasley. After a year-long courtship, the pair married and started a family in Mississippi that would eventually include three children. 
Inspired by the monumental Brown v. Board of Education decision, Evers quit his stable job as an insurance salesman to put his talents to work for the civil rights movement. Although his efforts to integrate the University of Mississippi Law School failed when they did not admit him, the NAACP took notice of the ambitious Evers and appointed him their first field secretary. This is a man who for eight or nine years organized in a state where civil rights workers would disappear. To be a member of the NAACP and to be the front person of that organization in the state was a remarkably courageous act. Evers quickly settled into a job of shaking up the establishment. Focusing on crimes against blacks, he set up boycotts against white-owned businesses that practiced discrimination and helped investigate acts of violence, such as the Emmett Till lynching, where a 14-year-old black boy was lynched for just talking to a white woman. Thank you. 
drama. Music hit your heart, cause I know you got a soul. Listen if you're missing y'all, swinging while I'm singing. Giving what you're getting, knowing what I'm knowing. While the black band's sweating, in the rhythm I'm rolling. Gotta give us what we want, gotta give us what we need. Our freedom of speech is freedom of death. We got to fight the powers that be. Fight the power. the single most well-known African-American of his time and may have been the most celebrated black person in the entire world. Future educator and orator, Booker T. Washington was born a slave on a Virginia plantation on April 5th, 1856. He had to work as a young child and so he had to juggle hours walking miles and miles to school and then rush back to work. It was very difficult, but he was determined, and that's how he learned to read and write. Washington was allowed to attend school while working as a servant. And in 1872, he befriended the founder of Hampton Institute, who offered him a scholarship to the school. The emphasis at school was on industrial education, on crafts, on technical skills, teaching blacks and the former slaves how to make themselves valuable to the community in a very literal way. Washington taught at Hampton before being appointed by General Samuel Armstrong to head the newly formed institute in Tuskegee in 1881. This was a groundbreaking endeavor because Armstrong trusted this young man to go to Alabama and create something basically out of nothing. During the post-reconstruction period, Tensions between African Americans and Southern whites were at a fever pitch. But as evidence of racial progress, Washington was asked to address a predominantly white audience at the 1895 Atlanta Expo. The speech turned Washington into a national figure. The Atlanta Compromise speech is viewed as controversial because he essentially said that politics was for mainstream society and the thing for African Americans was to be separate as the fingers on our hand and not involve ourselves with white society. Booker T. Washington saw that as a bargain that he had to strike. Those who disagreed with him felt that he had conceded far, far too much to the conservative white South. Hey, yo, before I get up out of here, it's a must that I send a shout out to all my brothers and sisters that's locked down behind the walls, man. Y'all keep y'all head up. And if you out there listening, any family member, and you got a cousin, or auntie, or uncle, husband, or wife, man, don't forget them about them when they lock down, man. Shoot them a kite, man. Answer the phone at least once a month, man. Special shout out to the lifers in San Quentin, man. Big old shout out to Ace Uno, man. Free Uno, free Harry O, free Big Kiki, man. And man, y'all keep y'all head up, man. Just the homie Fleetwood, man. Unfortunately, as they say, all good things must come to an end. I truly hope you enjoyed the show. And as you nodded your head or pad your feet to the soulful sounds, I hope you did receive something from the dialogue and conversation that uplifted you today. Something that hopefully inspired you to go and uplift somebody else. Please, whatever you do, stay close to God, man. And I guarantee you what you want, it won't be far from you. 
what you do, man, is call on them. Call them because the number ain't never disconnected. I don't care what you call them. Just call them. God is not a merry-go-round. He will not turn on you. So turn to him. Once again, this is Fleetwood from the Fleetwood Report. Please have a peaceful and a prosperous day. Two from the good black girl.